The main goal of this tool that we call Daily Print is assess the 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 carbon footprint of dairy farms. But but and and I think the but here is very important because uh, we wanted to do a system that is extremely simple to use, very user friendly, but still solid and grounded heavily on the scientific knowledge. So hello everyone, my name is Luis Ferrero, one of the hosts of the Dairy Nutrition Black Belt Podcast. Uh, pleasure being here today with my colleague, uh, Dr. Vitor Cabrera, professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison and extension specialist, which is a very important uh, factor as well. Uh, so, Victor, last episode, we discussed a lot about the dairy brain and the importance of gathering all the information from a dairy system together to better understand how can we make more informed decisions, right? So today, I want to discuss with you about a different project that you have that you have been working on that I think is quite interesting to the industry as well, which is the dairy print. Can you give us a little bit of the background of this project and the concept related to? Certainly, thanks, uh, Luis, uh, for bringing that up. I mean, uh, we we have been uh, working in a in a fast pace uh, on developing a tool that we think would be very uh, important for dairy farmers, dairy practitioners, uh, in order to, the main goal of this tool that we call Dairy Print is assess the, the, the carbon footprint of dairy farms. But, but and, and I think the but here is very important because uh, we wanted to do a system that is extremely simple to use, very user friendly, but still solid and grounded heavily on the scientific knowledge. So that was the challenge, right? Because we do know uh, exist out there in the industry, very good models and life cycle assessments that calculate footprint on dairy farms and agricultural systems in general that are very well done, but they are very cumbersome to be utilized. And they require, there are two things. One is they're very difficult to use for practitioners, for, for the user, final user. And even then, they would require quite a bit of data to be input, to be used. And, and even then, at the end, when the results are collected, it still needs quite expertise to interpret those results to come up to the final messages. So we wanted to put all this together in a simple package, but still keep the solid science behind it. So we thought about this dairy print and we were lucky enough to have um, some funding from the Dairy Innovation Hub uh, uh, here in Wisconsin, which we are very grateful to. And we start collecting all the latest information, scientific information from the literature about the emissions of greenhouse gases. And we put on top also uh, the balance of nutrients, important nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So the idea at the end was to present to the user, what is the level of emissions of greenhouse gases from different sources, I'm gonna talk in a moment, and the balance of important nutrients. With always keeping in mind with the least amount of data being input and the most user-friendly possible. Adiseo, a global leader in nutritional solutions and the provider of Smart Amine M, the best in-class rumen-protected methionine product for dairy producers who want to optimize milk production, capture more value from their components, and maintain the lifetime performance of their herds. 
For more product information and to calculate your return on investment when you balance your feed with amino acids, go to MilkPay.com. Now that sounds great. You know, uh, user-friendly tools are always uh, uh, the, the best available options out there. So said that, right, you mentioned you create a simple model in terms of easier for the uh, user to input everything, and yet very solid with a scientific background. So how can this tool be used by dairy farmers or dairy consultants willing to understand better their carbon footprints uh, and start taking actions related to that? Great question. Thanks, uh, Luis. Uh, first of all, I, I should mention, I, I have this website. It's very simple to remember, dairymgt.info. Uh, the other way to get very simple is just Google dairy management in Wisconsin. That would be the first or the top um, link there. So it should be very easy to find. And in that uh, website, there are there is a section about tools and there is a subsection about environmental tools and there you will find the dairy print. So very simple. Everything works online. So you don't need to download or install anything. It should be readily available to work there. And you will need to define only simple things. Like for example, what's the general level of production of the farm? Uh, what's the number of animals on the farm? Uh, based on that, the tool actually will calculate uh, with some also levels of uh, cooling and reproduction, very general, it will simulate how looks like the herd population. And based on that, it will calculate the enteric methane emission according to our calculations as well of dry matter intake and a very general definition of the diets being provided to those animals. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. So that, that will be the first step. We will have a very good estimate of the enteric methane emission from the animals themselves, different groups, not only lactating cows, but all the groups of animals that will be defined there. And then uh, we will move to the next part that also produce a good amount of uh, greenhouse gases, which is the manure. So we calculate as well how much manure is being uh, excreted what's the composition of this manure, and the user will have the opportunity to define very simple what kind of manure system exists on the farm. If it is a pond, if it is a slurry, uh, if they empty the manure lagoon once a year, twice a year, if they have a biodigester on the farm, all those things will certainly have a good impact on the results. So here, it would be greenhouse gas emitted for other sources, in this case from manure, rather than the enteric methane. And then we will move, and the idea of what normally what happens on the farm is all this manure uh, will be applied to the field. So uh, the user will need to define also in a very simple way what are the fields, what the crops are, and uh, how much of the manure has been, in general, been applied to these fields and uh, the tool will calculate how much additional greenhouse gases are being produced there. And in every step as well, we will be calculating the balance of the nutrients, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. That's very nice. So basically you can simulate an entire herd and better understand their carbon footprint. Said that, would the user be able to simulate a different scenario for their herd by changing a couple of those factors you mentioned that are very important uh, into the predictions of greenhouse gases? Great, I appreciate the, 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 the question actually, because that's in, in certain way, uh, one important goal of the tool. So the user is capable to ask what if questions to the tool in a very simple and quick manner. Like for example, the user can say, uh, which is something that probably is going to be more popular nowadays. What if I use an additive that decreases um, methane emission? The, in this case, the enteric methane, right? Like, like, for example, 3NOP. It's not still available in the US, but it should be available during this summer, as I heard. 
but it's available in many other parts like in Brazil or Europe. And, and that the user can define how much it decreases the enteric methane, or we can use uh, literature data. And then that will, you will see with numbers, it will quantify how much less uh, greenhouse gas emissions would be emitted by using that additive or other additives that could be entered there. In the case of the manure, the, the user can define and, and, and say, I'm emptying and applying my manure only once a year in the spring or summer or, or fall, but he said, what if I empty twice? Or what if I cover my lagoon? Those things will have important implications on the emissions, right? Or what if I change my crops? I do more of this crop or another crop. Uh, I could also, the user could also change uh, slightly the diets, uh, uh, change the LDF or the dry matter intake uh, by, by changing the, the forage concentration, more concentrate or less concentrate. And that will impact also the emissions and the balance of the nutrients. So there are several points that are very easy to actually work and, um, and, and, and see the impacts, quantify the impacts by using those. Wow, those are great scenarios to try to figure out what could possibly change in a dairy by uh, making those changes. So I, I'm really intrigued. I'll certainly be trying some of those because definitely all those nutrition examples fit perfectly with what I want to learn about how a dairy can change a little bit those carbon footprints. Great. So thanks again, Victor, for joining us today. Thank you, you at home, for joining for this second episode with uh, Dr. Victor Cabrera, professor at the University of Wisconsin. I hope you enjoy our discussions about uh, how to integrate data in the first episode and now how to actually better understand carbon footprint uh, and you can start using some of those tools out there. So thanks again for joining us today. I hope to see you soon. Hey everyone, we are always searching for the latest and greatest research to share weekly. If you have a dairy nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details of your research to hello at wisenetics.com. Thank you and hope to see you soon.